Welcome back to the video series on sampling distributions. We're just going to continue to work with our sampling distribution. And today we're going to get into how we can compare that to the true values. So if you recall from the last video, we had these um, the sample of dice rolls that we were able to visualize and then create a sampling distribution um, of the means of each sample. So one of the reasons that we develop these sampling distributions is that we use them to test things. So we can say, does the sampling distribution center around the true mean? And so in this case, one of the benefits of working with dice rolls as an example is that we know what the true mean is. It's seven. You will always, in theory, if you roll enough dice, you will always get seven as the most common and sort of central number. And in particular, the dice outcomes sort of uh, follow this trend where there's, um, you can roll a one and a one to get a two, but you can roll a one and a two to get a three, you can get one and a two that way. And so we have the most values for seven. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the coding here. So I've pre-coded this aspect of the um, theoretical outcomes. And this is a very, a, a little bit of a faster way to develop a large data frame because we've pre-wrote all of these. And so each of these, um, if we run this, and come down here, we can print out twos, for example, and it's just one, two, but then if we look at sevens, it's a list of six sevens. And so this is a quick way to develop a, um, a data frame or a series of data frames, and then we can connect them so we can create a new data frame called true df, use our pd.dataframe command, and again, doing this curly bracket so that we can specify the outcome. And the outcome is just twos plus threes plus fours plus fives and so on. So this is why we create these variables above because we can quickly just add them together in order to create a data frame that doesn't need us to sit there and write out every single number that is included in our true data frame. And so we can come down here and print true df. And so then we can see that we've got the outcome here and we've got all of our data in a single column. And so then we can also, you know, plot that, um, plot those values. And so we're gonna use a histogram. So we'll say ggplot, true df, and then we say geom histogram and give it our AES statement. So our x is just equal to outcome. We don't have any y, we're not doing any fill. We say bins equals 12, bin width equals one, and then Outside of the histogram, I'm going to add a second or a third line um, that we say scale x continuous. And we say breaks range from 2 to 13. And this will essentially tell the histogram where we want our specific 
breaks um, for our bins. And so the range tells it the first value, and you'll notice that it only goes until 12, but we said 13. This is a um, something that you have to do in Python whenever you're having a range of data. The last one is not inclusive. So you can say from two to 13, exclusive to 13, meaning that it's really two to n minus one. In this case, n minus one is 12. So here we've got our data frame of true values, which is exactly what we expect. We have this nice bell curve, seven up here is the maximum, and we can go on either side. So this is our, our population. This is our true population. And what we wanna do is compare our data or our samples to that theory or true population. So we've got several steps here. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new column called label, which is going to specify that this is the true outcome as opposed to a sample. So to create a new data for our new variable, a new column, we just add it here and tell it what goes into it. So it's just gonna be true. So if we just print out the first five rows, we can now see that we've got this label and everything is set to true. So then the next thing that we need to do is reset the index. Um, and we do this so that um, the sample number can, well, we're resetting the index to our data um, frame up here so that we can make sure that we have the actual values in, um, in a column instead of as an index. So this is just data df dot reset index. And so now we can see that we've got um, what used to be a index is now a row or a column. And then we need to rename. So just so that um, it matches the true DF column. We want them both to be called label. So we say data DF, oh, we need to save it as something. So data DF equals data DF dot rename. And then we change sample to label, making sure that we match exactly what we wrote up here down to the proper cases. And just to show how that is changing, we can print out the first five rows. So now we can see that this is no longer called sample, it's called label. And then finally, we can concatenate this into two data frames while maintaining our long format. So we'll just call it data frame concat. We use the pd.concat function. And in this case, we give it our first data frame, comma, our second data frame in square brackets. We print that we can see that it starts off with all of our true data and then it ends with all of our sample data. And so then the last thing that we can do to compare the true population with our sample is that we can create um, a histogram. And so what we'll do is again using ggplot 
we'll say df and cat is our data. Again, geome histogram. We give it the AES statement. So we say x equals outcome. Um, in this case, we're going to add a y. And in particular, we're going to use this to um, essentially make it do a statistic rather than a count on the histogram. So we're going to say after stat density. So this will tell it to use the density calculation as the y value instead of a count. And then we want to fill based off of the label. And again, we want to specify 12 bins, a bin width of one, and we're going to add an extra thing called position, which will essentially prevent it from stacking on top of each other. We'll just separate them out so that they're next to each other. And then we'll do our scale x continuous. so that our range is as expected. So we can run this. And so now we can see the distribution of all of these values. So our true value in purple here, we can see it's got this nice bell curve, but we can see that sample four, for example, had a lot of sixes and less down here. We can see that sample three, um, to one, two, and four have more sevens than the true value and so forth. And so we can use this to see how these distributions um, compare. And then if we wanted to find the sample distribution again, we need to get the distribution of the means in order to make it a sample distribution, so we'll call this df means two. So we can say df underscore and cat dot group by. And in this case, we're going to group by label. We're going to say mean. And then we're also going to rename. so that they're a bit more descriptive. Outcome will become sample means. And so now we can see each of our sample means and the true population mean down here at the bottom. And we can use that to compare. Um, and what we'll get into in the next series of videos is how we can use this data to develop confidence intervals and start to make some inferences based off of our um, sample.